Hello and welcome back to a very much needed update vlog. I started the series last year and classic me very quickly fell off the wagon, but for very good reason. I've been doing some really exciting things with the handry. I want to quickly update you because I got a bit more information to link in to last year's last vlog. The last vlog that I did with the handry was all about this layout conundrum that I found and discovered based on the Castagnari layout versus Bruno Latron's layout that's in his own tutor books. I'll quickly update you on what was found in my last vlog when I got the instrument, the layout that I'd ordered from Castagnari using the Castagnari Bruno Latron layout is vastly different to the tune book layout that he has printed in his own tune books. So I was questioning at some point what, what's happened, has he got two layouts? And the answer is yes. You can go and catch up on those vlogs, links down below. The update is, I did go to Bruno last year, I tried to message him through Facebook and in the end some lovely person commented and tagged him in a comment on the vlog post that I made on my Facebook page. He refers to two layouts. He says that one of them was experimental and abandoned and the other one is the one that he decided to make the tune book tunes out of. I think if you're going to make four tune books of your material you'd be doing that out of the non-experimental layout, right? So I think the layout that's in his tune books is the layout that he currently plays on um, and the experimental layout that he abandoned is the Didier Lalois slash Bruno Latron Castagnari layout, the one that is on the Castagnari website. It's very, very similar to the Heim layout. There are just a couple of tiny tweaks and it could be that he experimented by making those tiny tweaks and then decided to abandon it because he massively changed it and went for the layout that is in his tune books. So that kind of puts my mind at ease and anybody else who was a bit curious, I've had a few messages and emails over the last year from people who want to get the Bruno Latron layout and um, I were a bit confused about which version to go for. For me, I stuck with the Castagnari version, the version that's on the Castagnari website, the version that Didier Lalois plays, the version that um, Toon Van Mierlo plays. I'm very, very happy with it. So that's me satisfied on the layout stuff. Now to tell you about all the exciting things we've been up to over the last year. So in case you've missed it on all of my social media platforms, for the last year, I have been involved with Fisherman's Friends the Musical a wonderful piece of UK commercial theatre touring around the UK and Canada. It was incredibly exciting to be offered an opportunity to job share the Melodian player role with Hazel Askew and be part of an original cast recording and all sorts of insanely crazy wonderful things that have happened over the last year. I didn't have time to carry on doing what I planned to do, which was learn how to use that instrument in my own way kind of, you know, learning tunes, going to workshops, etc, etc. I couldn't do that because I was busy in rehearsals and busy touring the country, going to different theatres and performing with 23 other people on stage. Honestly, absolutely phenomenal that I even got the opportunity to do it. But the fact that I had tooled myself up with this brand new wonderful instrument, which was absolutely perfect for certain songs and tunes within the show, could not be more happy. Here it is. It's now just over a year old and it's got picked up a few battle scars along the way. Theatre is a very active job. It's a bit of a martial art in places. Um, and unfortunately, the instrument has got a few kind of war wounds from that. But nothing that bothers me. I think instruments in my life are here to work. I'm a professional musician. They have a job to do. And unfortunately, sometimes, despite my best efforts, they pick up a few battle scars. I had to put Velcro on it. I really didn't want to because of where the mic packs needed to be situated and the fact that there were four Melodians in the show, I had to quickly move mic packs around. So I had to have Velcro on all of my instruments, which is something I've never ever wanted to do. I've actively avoided that my entire life because they're beautiful. So much work goes into making them that then just to shove some Velcro on them just feels incredibly wrong in my opinion. But as I say, I had to succumb to that. The job needed doing and it needed doing in the way that made most sense. When I came to do the London rehearsals with this back in July last year, I quickly realised that the note that had been a way to be changed, if you remember back again, I mentioned about this note on the right hand. It was an A sharp. It came in as an A sharp because on the Castagnari layout, it says an A sharp. 
An A sharp is also a B flat, of which this instrument has a glycotone B flat, i.e. a B flat that goes both ways. So it makes no sense to have another one shoved at the bottom. On the Bruno Latron layout, there is actually an A natural. It came with an A natural, but because it was tuned um, differently on the Castagnari layout, it went away to have that changed back to an A sharp, which made no sense at all. And I didn't realise that at the time until we came to rehearsals and the opening number of the whole piece, Nelson's Blood, required an A natural on the direction that doesn't happen normally on the keyboard layout. So the instrument got sent away and was changed back at my own expense and frustration that it had been changed from what had already been implemented anyway. I was in London rehearsals with a brand new instrument that I really had not spent much time with at all. I mean, the literally the vlogs that you saw stopped at the point I started to rehearse with it. And I'd done Le De Frere, I'd learnt that tune and not much else. I'd twiddled around a few maybe of my own compositions, kind of just getting used to the different sounds and the colour palette that's now available to me with all of these different buttons, but hadn't really gone very far with it. And then suddenly got this whole score of music. It's musical theatre, darling. So there's songs and there's little intermediate tunes and there's little um, underscores and things that happen off stage. And this instrument um, needed to be used a fair amount, um, but, but particularly for the open number, which is incredibly chromatic. And actually, very gladly, as I realised, the Melodian opens the show. The opening number was this kind of big boat sort of swell. Absolutely brilliant, the way that it was used. Um, and yeah, it made me very, very happy every night that I got to look at the cue lights and be the very first sound that people heard out front. So we'd have this opening passage of... <laughs> And that would go on, nice big fat drone. And then it would sort of end up in this big. Building up. And then you'd end up with this. Very much got used to where things are. What you'll see on that Le De Frere video, as I watched everything back this morning before starting recording this, is that I really was hanging on for dear life on this left hand, whereas now it feels familiar. I feel like, oh, I'm at one, I can control the air very efficiently, whereas that was all quite new to me, a bigger instrument, it needed more wrestling at the time, whereas now it doesn't feel so humongous, it feels very much within my capability, it feels within my capacity physically as well, so I can move around on this hand nice and freely. So I got very much got used to it incredibly quickly, um, but the little bit that needed this pull A was um, some chords. That's a push A, so it's, it's now got a pull A and a push A. Which makes sense, right, to have those. You wouldn't normally get that, but to have that accidental. So we got there in the end. We made, made sense in the end. This was the bit that took me ages to get. It feels crazy now, but it did take me a long time to really settle with it. Um, but this little run of notes. This particular instrument popped up occasionally throughout the, the whole show with three other of my instruments. So the whole show is played across on diatonic boxes. This big 18 bass, which in my case is a GC, but when Hazel was on, she was playing her DG 18 three row. I played a DG box, I played my CF and a B flat E flat. And between all four instruments, the show was able to happen. The melodian part is mainly just rhythmical chugs, driving chugs, but it's there pr pretty much the whole show. There's a lot driven by the melodian track. Um, lots of pieces are started by the melodian. There are several underscores that are started by the melodian. You know, when I was on stage, when it was my turn to be on, it really did feel, um, well, the collective feeling of it all and the way that the instrument track flowed around. It was a nightmare to learn because, you know, for me, I, I had more limited rehearsal time than other pl other players. Hazel was the first one to go on and open the show. 
So her time was prioritised completely understandably. But she'd done the R&D in 2021. So she knew the show already, even though it had changed drastically. And I had to come in and, and learn it from scratch. And that was really difficult for me initially. It was probably the hardest, most stressful job I've ever had. But I must say it's been the most rewarding and the people I've met along the way have been incredible. I got to do some really amazing things that, you know, to think about from, you know, the outside and for people that have been and seen it, my students and friends, my family that have come to see it, they just can't believe that I'm singing, I'm dancing and I'm playing the instrument all at the same time. So there's a lot of activity during the show. Uh, at one point I get to stand on the fishing boat and be moved around the set, which was quite incredible. Lots of stepping up onto fishing crates, coming downstairs, um, lots of dancing whilst playing. And I really got to understand the world of the way the theatre worked and meet some incredible actor musicians along the way. I am now an actor musician. I can add that feather to my cap. The things that I've been able to achieve and learn along the way. My love of theatre really is what I think enabled me to get on with the job. I, I was expected just to get on and make it make sense and luckily was given all of the encouragement to go and make that make sense. One of the other cool bits of the show that I got to do on this instrument was the BBC Spotlight theme. The BBC like news theme is a bit of a vibe. As a band of musicians had to work out how to make that happen. And luckily for the Melodian, we got the, the funky bass part. <laughs> opening number was the biggest feature for this instrument and then there were a few other little bits. There was a, a sort of drone, a long G drone, so with this instrument being GC I have the G in both directions so I was able to make that little bit work and then out of the drone we go into um, a song as the band just to do a little scene change transition so I was able just to kind of have this just sort of accompany myself and the rest of the band playing. It essentially at times acted as a melodian, it at times acted like a bass guitar, it essentially acted as a, a normal guitar, a kind of six string. Um, so it was very much part of that um, backing line uh, along with the drum kit and the, the rhythmical section, but it did take melody as well. So yeah, for a Handry update, there's been a lot more to update you on. The Handry got a job and it did very well at its job and it's worked really hard this year. I am grateful for this opportunity to have just got me stuck in learning it and doing a completely different job I wasn't anticipating doing. What's up for us next? This will be going away for a service soon now that it is a year old. It needs its one year service, it's now settled, there's a few tuning tweaks that need doing. In the next few weeks I am going to be going off to France. I'm taking myself off for a little continuous professional development. I'm going to be doing a workshop out there as a student with this instrument. I'm only taking this instrument so it's going to force me to get stuck in, get to grips with it a lot more on the right hand melodically. Then I'm going to be doing some festivals out there as well as a dancer and a musician, just chilling out, having a bit of a holiday, but making it productive at the same time, learning more to do with this instrument, this layout, this style that I'm falling in head over heels in love with. The whole reason I got this instrument was to have this dream of traveling around France, stopping off in beautiful locations, meeting up with local musicians and having chance to play with them. And that's what's going to be happening now this summer. I can't wait to get to know my baby even more and start to use it, um, not for the purpose of a job, but just to fall in love with it and really get to know it on a deeper level. If you'd like to see more on that journey, I probably will be vlogging, but let me know down below if there's anything specific that you want to see um, in that vlog. So, you know, do you want to see me kind of struggling to learn it? Do you want to see me just doing the flashy stuff? Do you just want to see me traveling around having a nice time? Do you want to see all of that? Um, you know, anything particular, any places that I should visit along the way. Let me know what you want to see down below in that vlog 
and I will do another update very, very soon where I will not be in my house. I will be out and about in the gorgeous French countryside. I can't wait. Hi hey guys, future Melda stepping in here. Whilst I've been editing this vlog, I realised there was way too much footage uh, to fit into one um, episode. So there's going to be a part two. I've kept this one to all about the handry and keep an eye out for a general working in theatre as a folk musician melodeon player in the UK and in Toronto in Canada, um, because there's a lot more stuff that I wanted to cover. Um, but as I say, couldn't fit it in. Back to the scheduled viewing. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Take care and I hope you're getting on with your instrument as well. And if not, I do a lot of teaching online, so do check out the links in the description. There's loads and loads of resources on my Patreon and on my online Melodian classes and my online courses. So do check out the link in my description and hopefully I'll get to see you online shortly. I've had a wonderful time on my Fisherman's Friends tour with my trusty handry and all of the other Castagnari instruments and the lovely honers that I get to play. If you were able to see the show, leave me a comment down below. Let me know where you saw it. Let me know which, which Melodian player was on. Was it me? Was it Hazel? Hopefully I get to do that a lot more. Fingers crossed, watch this space. Bye. You're happier now I'm home, aren't you? Now that I'm not touring around everywhere. Hmm?